I'm Carol O'Halloran and welcome to the show. Fun, fitness, wellness and inspiration. Over 50, so what? I'm not older, I'm better. What are you saying to yourself? A study done by the Mayo Clinic showed that optimistic people live about 12 years longer than pessimistic ones and they obviously have more fun. To kick off with today, we chat with Gillian Ramsden from The Listening Space. Are you being challenged by a relationship breakdown or a change in your work situation? Gillian has some powerful questions for you. Please join in with the fun five minute fitness routine. Movement is the key to healthy aging. Keep moving and lastly, we meet some of a mature Chinese community out having fun on a trip to Echuca. I had no clear direction of where I wanted to go. I didn't know what I wanted or where I fitted in. Does that sound like you or maybe someone you know? This statement is from one of the men who've been helped by Gillian Ramsden. She is a personal empowerment strategist and results coach. She's also the founder of The Listening Space. Gillian, a lot of people watching, we have done um, segments on the show about people who get divorced after 50, um, which is a very traumatic time for a lot of people, especially men. Can you give us some top tips for someone who's actually faced with that scenario at the moment? Yes, I think the first thing I would say is to sit down and understand what factors are in your control right now. When you're going through those kinds of situations, you feel like somebody has made a decision that you maybe didn't want to um, have happen and there's a sense of losing control and life out of control and stress, anxiety and all those things start to come up. So I think the first thing is just to sit down and reevaluate where you're at in your life right now. Understand some of the things that you've been tolerating or what are the things that you're telling yourself that you feel like you should be doing or should be doing something else. And when you start to unpack those and regain a sense of, well, what's in my control now? What are the things that I can take action on now? I think it's really important to help a person feel like they're not spiralling. On the show, we often find, you know, there's people there going through divorce after 50, the transitioning to retirement, the midlife crisis. Yeah. They're faced with all these things sort of in midlife. Yeah. Because 50 to 70 is still midlife now that yeah. our longevity is so yeah. high. Um, can you tell us a bit about the male suicide situation in Australia? Yes, those rates are um, quite astounding. In fact, I think it's over the age group of 40, 40 plus, the percentage is 53% of suicides are men. Um, that's a staggering um, statistic. Men are impacted more than women, so that they have a three or four times likelihood than women to take their own life. And I've got some pretty interesting theories around that, um, that kind of move the conversation away from mental health. If you think about it, I, I, I think about it in this way. We go back to very primal times. When a man's standing at the cave and there's a saber-toothed tiger out there trying to get in and he's protecting his family, he doesn't stop and think about the consequences of going out there to protect his family. And I feel like that, that primal take action without a second thought has a big contributing factor to the suicide rate. So when a man gets to a point of just feeling lost and empty, uh, especially when you talked about divorce in later life and that disconnection. So all of their life spent working to support a family then suddenly they find they don't have any more, I think weighs very heavily. And I, my theory is there's a decision to act and opt out. And it's based on that very primal, not thinking through the consequences that once you do this, that is it. Yes, it'll end that pain that you're currently going through, but it's going to end everything else as well and leave devastating consequences 
um, behind for the people around you that do care. So I think it comes back to a very primal wiring and if we can tap into that and say, yes, let's help you end this pain, but keep you alive in the process by exploring some other options. Because there are always other options. The problem is when we're in the middle of that, it just feels like everything is weighing you down. It's really hard to see what is available to you without some additional support, of course, as well. But I think if we can help men to understand, yep, sure, act. How about we act on another option? <laughs> yeah. And positive. Yeah. So one of your strategies is if you're going through a crisis point, whether it's going through divorce, maybe you're stuck in a job and you want to have a sea change, um, that you one of the first things you do is you really look at your values. Yeah, I, I'd probably wind it back a little bit further. Mm. Um, the very first thing I'd be looking at is understanding what a person's idea of the world is right now. Like, how do they see themselves? I mean, we need to understand a person's own view of their life. Yeah, so you help them to find the answers themselves. Yeah. So you can t tell us about the seven powerful questions because that's one of the tools, isn't it? The seven powerful questions is a tool um, that I use to make freely available to men because societal norms kind of lay over men a little bit and they won't seek help because they feel that they're weak. Uh, mm. I have heard men say, oh, well, you're supposed to just you know, stiff up a lip and get on with it. Um, you're not allowed to cry, you're not allowed to talk about how you feel, uh, otherwise you're just seen as weak. And mm. so th that tool has seven powerful questions. They're, they're seven powerful questions for anybody, but they're questions that I've gotten a lot of feedback from men that actually really work for them and that really gets them to start to think at a deeper level. And it comes back to your question before about, you know, how do you know what their purpose is or what their goals are? When you start to look by asking them the things that they're kind of putting up with right now, um, in life, in their career, family, in all different kind of sectors of their life, when we start to unpack that, then they start to get an idea about actually, I used to really enjoy this, or this is something that I'm really passionately interested in. And the conversation will evolve, and then some new awareness comes up. I mean, most people just bury things down and get on with it. And it's not a good thing to do. So when we start to ask some questions to get people to think at a different level, then it's fascinating how much information can come up. So just a simple tool like that Seven Powerful Questions document is a free resource for men because I want men to actually start to think about having other options. Well, thank you very much today for your time and all those amazing uh, thoughts for people to think about. That's been absolutely fantastic and people can find you through the listing space. They can indeed, Carol. Thanks so much for your time. It's been a great conversation and I've really enjoyed being here. If you need a chair for support, grab a chair, or just move where you are. Check the floor around you. No cords, no mats, no dogs, no cats, and walk. And we do four taps. Eight walks. And tap. Back we go. That's it. Last set. And tap. Last one. And now we're going to do four walks, two taps. Let's do it. Walk, 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 and tap, tap. Walk, 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 and tap. Strut your stuff. Tap, tap, 
walk, 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 and tap. Yeah! Keep it going! Last one! Okay, now hold it there. We're going to step forward, tap, back, tap. I'll do it slowly. Forward, tap, back, tap. Forward, tap, back. Now speed it up. Forward, tap, back, tap. Forward, tap, back, tap. Forward, tap, back, tap. I'm just showing you sideways so you can see what we're doing. Forward, tap, back, tap. Forward, tap. Now, we're going to shimmy. Shimmy. And back. Shimmy. And back. Shimmy. Yeah. Shake it, guys and gals. And then we're going to add a clap. Shimmy. And clap. That's it. Shimmy. And clap. Shimmy. And clap. Shimmy. And clap. Shimmy. And clap. Four more. Four. And three. And two. And one. Okay, back to eight walks. Are you ready? Are you ready? Let's go. Four, five, six, seven, eight. And tap. Back we go. And tap it. Just do freestyle with your arms. You can put a little bounce in your step. And walk. Yeah. And tap. Okay, let's cut it in half. Four. Walk, walk, walk. And tap. Tap. Walk, walk, walk. And tap. Tap. Walk, 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 and tap. Woohoo! Just watching out for the rabbit holes. Faye said she's getting hot. Last one. Now we're going to do to the other side. Forward, tap, back. Tap, so we go forward, tap, back, tap, forward, tap, back, tap, forward, tap. Should, should be on the other leg. That's, I'm just showing you sideways. Forward, tap, tap, forward, tap. That's it. Forward, tap, back, tap, forward, tap, back, tap. Okay, ready. And shimmy. And I threw the clap in already. That's it, shimmy. Yeah. Yeah, good stuff, everybody. Five minutes a day. That's all you need. I've just been to my first Australian citizenship ceremony and in my local community there were 30 countries represented in that one ceremony, truly showing the diversity of our new Australians. And today we're celebrating the Chinese part of our diversity. We're out on a social outing with Link and we're up exploring regional areas at Echuca with a paddle steamer. <laughs> having a lot of fun out here on the paddle steamer at Echuca 
with some of the members of the Point Cook Chinese Friendship Association and with them we've got Michael and we've got Hope. And Michael, you're involved with founding this Chinese Friendship Association. Yes, I followed it in I think uh, 2012 when I first moved to uh, Melbourne. And where did you come from? Canberra. We live in Canberra for about 22 years and we migrated to Australia from Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia. Ah. And you and you speak Chinese though? Yes, uh, because we most of us from Malaysia kind of bilingual because for, for myself for example I went to Chinese school in primary then went into uh, high school which is English so we speak at least two languages plus we also must know the national language which is Malay so Malaysia Chinese Canberra and now you're in Melbourne and then what made you decide to start the association Basically, I think at that time, I think uh, I saw a lot of uh, our friends kind of, uh, they're wandering around, but they like to get together because most of them just came here from China without friends. So I thought if we can get together somehow, then they can make friends among themselves. So that is the reason I started to say, let's, let's get together and have this club. That's how we started. Oh, very good. And now Hope, you yeah. tell me about your involvement with the Friendship Club and you, your arrival in Australia and... Yeah, you know. I, I was a Taiwanese, a oh, Chinese man. original, married a married Malaysian, okay, and I moved to Malaysia and I moved to Australia, from Canberra I moved to Melbourne. And uh, I think I miss my own language very much, okay, because I'm a, usually is a Mandarin speaker. Michael is half half, but I'm a Mandarin speaker. So I'm really looking for some friends in Point Cook. So I even the first time I met somebody in the bus is a Chinese, and I moved to her said, uh, "Can you speak Chinese?" And she said, "Yeah, yeah, 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 yeah." So I mingle with her. I said, "Where can we find some more other friends like us?" And she said, oh, "There's a some way in the in the community center we have somebody there." Okay, so I met more Chinese, and uh, then. I encourage Michael say, yes, come on, let's have something to do. So how many members have you got? So far, uh, at that time, actually, we start with uh, 20 or 30 people. Now we have 160, I think. Wow, that's great. And now you come out on social outings all together like this one. Have you been on an outing with Link before? Yes, we went to, uh, what's the last one? We went to... Uh, Wow. Castle Man, Castle Man, Man. Man. yes, Castle and Man. we also go to the social dinner, a uh, lunch, social dinner, and it was wonderful, yes. Mm. So tell us, you're a, an artist, you've been an artist since you were 18 years yeah. old. Tell us a bit about what your real passion and career is with art and how you got involved with this volunteer work. Right, um, well I'm a glass artist, I started off as a furnace worker, glass blowing, and the older you get, you know, your back and all everything. So I've started now doing, um, well, I've been doing it for about 15 years now, is uh, lamp work glass jewellery. So making jewellery, working in silversmithing and that. So I have my own studio in Kensington in, in River Studios. And I started volunteering for Link about three years ago. And I, I don't know, I just thought I should volunteer. And it's really been great because I go out once every fortnight um, so I work for myself during the week or I teach on weekends and like today I'm out in the fresh air, out in a steam boat you know, or up at Tulip Tesla's or you know and we, we have different groups of clients and you get to know them and you create friendships with them and it's just nice helping and getting out and some people can't get out so having an organised outing and they meet their friends on the bus, and us as well, the, the you know, people who help them on their day trips, the outing hosts. It's just lovely to be involved. And what do you think the people get out of going on a trip, especially with people that come from a similar cultural background? Oh, look, today it's all about community. It's all about community involvement and friendship. And even for people who aren't from the same background, it's the same thing. They create friends. I've noticed one lady, it was her first trip, and she didn't utter a word. 
And I said, oh, look, you know, you can say something if you don't like it. Then we help correct it, you know. And she said, oh, I can't do that. And now she's only been here about maybe four months and, oh, she's happy chatting away, knows everybody. And it's like people are a bit quiet at first, but everybody talks to everybody. So it's a nice outing no matter what, where you come from. Our largest in the other way. And it's probably in the river, I say, in the 19th century. Jesse, we had a bit of a chat on the bus and we both ended up living in New Zealand. Well, I'm actually from New Zealand, but tell us about how you got to New Zealand. That was uh, 1986 uh, for study purpose. And where were you before that? Um, in Beijing. I finished university in Beijing from the normal university. And then uh, I didn't enjoy the teaching job. <laughs> and I just quit. So, so you went for education to New Zealand, and then how did you come up to ending up in Australia? Yeah, it's, um, I've got two kids, a boy and a girl, and I brought my girl to Australia for her a tennis career. Oh. Tennis? So she's yeah, a sportswoman? Yeah, she's um, a tennis player. Oh. It's a part of a training with Ashley Batty. Oh, really? Training with Ashley? Oh, yeah. okay. In Marvin Park. Wow. So what would you say to anybody watching us today who's from a Chinese background about coming on a social outing, especially if they're a bit more mature like we are, yep. and we won't mention how old you are, which I know. <laughs> um, I'm okay. It's an okay age. 66. <laughs> quite old. Yeah. Yeah, quite now, old. what would you say to people, um, Chinese-speaking people at home, about why they should get out of the house and come and join us? Go out. Enjoy yourself. <laughs> yeah. Come out with us fun lot yeah, and enjoy right. yourself. Yeah. 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 I think yeah. that's the main thing. <laughs> <laughs> Camera yes. and say in Chinese, come and join us on a fun trip. Okay. Uh, 欢迎大家, uh, 参加我们, 然后, uh, Thank you for joining us today. For information on all the guests, please head over to our website. For information on all the guests, please head over to our website, carolhalloran.com. Be sure to grab the free seven powerful questions from Gillian at the listening space. And if you want to go on a day trip with people of a similar cultural background, contact Link Community and Transport. Details on our website too. For replays, please go to CTV Plus, on demand and on the app. To help keep the show going, please connect with us on YouTube, Facebook and Insta. Movement is medicine. Keep doing your five minute fitness every day. Keep saying to yourself, I'm not older, I'm better. Over 50, so what? See you next time. Thanks for watching our TV show. Be sure to hit subscribe and then you'll never miss an episode. Jump on Facebook, join our group, get in on the fun, fitness, wellness and inspiration. I'm Carol, over 50, so what?